This amazing creature resembles a prehistoric bird. It can be safely called the strangest bird in the world, which is extremely poorly studied. It is one of the largest birds, which is a close relative of storks, pelicans, and marabou. It's a bird whose population is disappearing at a breakneck pace. Yeah, that's right, it's a shoe-billed stork. The shoe-billed stork, Balinaceps rex, is a large, broad-winged bird that lives in the swamps and wetlands of Central and East Africa. This giant bird has a large body, huge wings, and a beak similar to a shoe. It is believed that this prehistoric bird is associated with non-extinct dinosaurs. These birds have dark gray, blue-gray, or gray plumage with a white belly. Their piercing eyes are yellow or white-gray. They have huge wings which can reach a wingspan of 2.4 meters. The bird loves papaya swamps and is usually found in spill areas where water slowly flows to the lake. The area is home to many fish, which are the main source of food for storks. The shoe-billed storks lead a daytime lifestyle, although they sometimes hunt at night if the moonlight is bright enough. In addition to fish, they also hunt water snakes, frogs, varanas, and young turtles. They have even been known to eat baby crocodiles. The shoebill reaches sexual maturity at the age of three to four years. They are monogamous birds sharing parental responsibilities. The female lays two or three eggs that incubate for 30 days. Both parents will turn the eggs over frequently with their feet. The chicks of this bird are covered with thick and silvery gray down and already have a wide mouth. However, the large beak, for which these birds are known, does not begin to show until they are a month old. When they are born, the parents take turns feeding their chicks smashed food. At one month of age, the parents begin to leave prey in the nest for the young birds to swallow. Plumage occurs at 95 days, and by 125 days, the chicks are independent. People have known about the shoebill for a very long time. They were first described in writing as early as ancient Egypt, so it is surprising that we know relatively little about them compared to other species. However, what we really do know demonstrates some surprising biological concepts. It is reported that the Arabs call the bird Abu Markab, or father of the shoe. So, is there anything cool other than the fact that its giant looks like a shoe and can decapitate crocodiles? Sure, they make cool machine gun noises. Shoe-billed storks are silent most of the time, but rumble around the nest or greet another bird. This loud and frightening sound is the last sound many poor monitor lizards ever hear. The shape of a bird's beak is designed for eating certain types of food and provides a great clue as to what the main source of food is. The huge beaks serve as a device for catching and holding the large slippery fish they hunt. Its large beak ranges from 20 to 24 centimeters long and 10 to 12 centimeters wide. It also has a razor-sharp, curved hook on the end that pierces its prey like a spear. The size of the beak helps these birds strike their prey with a unique technique known as collapse. The birds stand motionless in the water looking for food. Upon spotting prey, the birds dash or fall on their prey spreading their wings. The bird then dives, beak goes first, and ambushes the prey. During the flight, the wings are kept flat, and like pelicans and storks, the shoebill flies with the neck retracted. The speed of its sweeps is about 150 sweeps per minute, therefore it is considered one of the slowest birds, except for the larger stork species. Long flights of the shoebill are rare, and only a few flights exceeding the minimum feeding distance of 20 meters have been recorded. The shoebilled storks, like pelicans and other storks, practice urohydrosis to keep cool. Urohydrosis is a method of cooling similar to sweating that allows the bird to cool down. They also defecate on their feet to lower their body temperature. The liquid waste that these birds excrete from the cloaca is a mixture of feces and urine. The waste coats the bird's feet and as it evaporates, cools their skin just as evaporating sweat cools our skin. 
Unlike sweat, this method of cooling also involves preventive care. The evaporating liquid leaves behind a white powdery substance that can reflect sunlight and prevent heating of the feet in the first place. The main goal of an animal is to survive and pass on its genes, and there are several examples of how animals do this in nature. Birds can use different mechanisms, from concentrating energy on a small clutch of eggs to producing a large brood to increase the probability of survival. Some birds are monogamous and work as a team to raise their chicks, while others are polygamous or promiscuous and prefer to mate with as many partners as possible. Once a fascinating but gloomy example of animal survival is siblicide. Siblicide is when one offspring kills his brother or sister. There are several examples of birds that practice this behavior, including herons, egrets, pelicans, boobies, and shoe-billed storks. Shoe-billed stork eggs hatch asynchronously. The first chick that hatches has no siblings to fight with for overeating, so it eats well and develops quickly. When the second chick hatches, the parents make no effort to distribute food evenly, so it competes with its older, well-developed sibling. The elder chick will bully and beat its brother or sister, and often the youngest chick will die from wounds or starvation. By focusing on the strongest chick, the parents increase the chances that at least one of their offspring will reach maturity and pass on their genes. In terms of survival, it is better to have one healthy chick than several weak chicks who are unlikely to survive. Why is this so? Why do these birds choose to lay more than one egg when only one chick survives? The second, and sometimes the third egg, is more like an insurance policy. If the first egg is infertile or lost because of predators, the adults can still produce offspring. If there is planning to eat, aggression between chicks is limited and it is more likely that all the chicks will fledge. They are undoubtedly amazing birds, but even their size can protect these birds from extinction. What can we do so that our grandchildren can also admire these giants not only from a book? Shoe-billed storks are endemic to Africa and only inhabit remote wetlands. BirdLife International and the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, classify the birds as vulnerable to extinction. They survive in only a few countries such as South Sudan, which has the largest population of the continent with about 5,000 birds, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. Besides the threat posed by poachers, fires and human encroachment also endanger the species. Shoe-billed storks are shy birds that require large areas of undisturbed habitat to breed. When humans get too close, frightened birds abandon their nests, leaving eggs and chicks vulnerable to water lizards, snakes, and eagles. All of these threats have damaged the wild population of this species. The 2016 IUCN population estimate showed that 3,300 to 5,300 adults remain in the wild compared to 5,000 to 8,000 adults in 2008. Fishing comes to their rescue. During the breeding season, from September to December, a close-knit team of 12 fishermen watch over their nests, protecting their eggs and chicks. Besides being fishermen, they also work as guards for African Parks, a non-profit conservation organization. In 2012, the partners established the Shoebill Guard program. Their vigilance is paying off. Since 2012, when the program began, 25 chicks have successfully fledged from 21 protected nests. Six chicks stolen from nests have also been rescued from captivity and returned to the wild. The success prompted African Parks to expand the program in 2012. Nine men were hired as guards. The locals do not only protect shoebills, they are an important part of the conservation work carried out in Bangweyulu. Six chiefdoms, numbering about 50,000 people, own land here in joint holdings. In 2008, after decades of poaching and over-agriculture that had destroyed much of the wildlife and depleted the land, it was the chiefs, along with the Zambian government, who offered the African parks to take over the management of Bangweyulu.
The dog is a friend of a man. They have lived in our neighborhood for a long time. The dog is not just a pet. They help the police, help border guards. People also take dogs with them hunting. These animals delight us and bring us positive emotions every day. That's why not everyone realizes some dogs can be very dangerous to others. This topic always leads to considerable controversy among dog breeders because, as a rule, it all depends on the upbringing of the animal. Any breed can be raised as the sweetest creature or you can turn it into an aggressive monster. Not all dog breeds were bred to touch and delight their owners. Some breeds are genetically engineered to be aggressive and insubordinate. However, this doesn't mean that such a breed shouldn't be bred just that their owners should pay more attention to the upbringing and training of such animals. So, the most dangerous dogs are Rottweiler Rottweilers are quite powerful dogs, distinguished by their large size. These animals are very loyal. Rottweilers are very fond of children and make great dogs for families. Except for strangers they don't like and show aggression to them. Often, the Rottweiler doesn't understand whether they are joking with it or really threatening it, so you need to be on guard all the time with these animals. Without proper upbringing and a competent owner, the Rottweiler can pose a danger to outsiders. American Pit Bull Terrier This dog is considered one of the most dangerous dogs for a reason. The pit bull was bred to corral cattle and later pit bulls were used for dog fighting. The Pit Bull Terrier is characterized by fearlessness and aggression. For a long time, the breeders of this breed have been strenuously supporting these qualities of the animal. Therefore, if you decide to get a Pit Bull, you should pay a lot of attention to the upbringing of the dog and teach it to get along with other animals. German Boxer The Mastiff and Bulldog breeds were used to breed the Boxer. The German Boxer is characterized by stubbornness, quite inquisitive, and fearless. It is easy to train, and it obeys its master. Without training and upbringing, this animal will strive to dominate a man. As a rule, Boxers are not aggressive at all. If a Boxer decides to attack, however, it will hold its victim as long as the victim can resist. Therefore, its death grip is quite dangerous. Training of this dog should be started as early as when it's a puppy so that the animal knows exactly who the master is. Doberman The Doberman belongs to the service breeds. It was bred at the end of the 19th century in Germany. The Doberman is distinguished by its intelligence and especially needs the attention of a loving owner. These dogs are very active, always loyal to people, and are choleric by temperament. They can show spontaneous aggression. That's why if the Doberman feels even the slightest threat, it immediately becomes aggressive, attacking the victim. It bites in different places. However, if you pay proper attention to training the Doberman, you will get a great friend and protector for the entire family. Alaskan Malamute These large dogs are a bit like wolves in appearance. The Malamute is quite a friendly and cheerful dog, but has some hidden flaws. These are precisely the kind of dogs that continuously need the attention and care of their owner. During training, there may be difficulties because of the stubbornness and resentfulness of the Malamute. If the owner can earn respect and prove his intellectual superiority, then you will get a loyal friend who will unquestioningly obey your commands. The Malamute is quite dangerous because it can attack a person even from boredom and not just from the lack of proper upbringing. Wolf Dog This breed was created by crossing a wolf and a German Shepherd. This unusual breed closely resembles a wolf but is smaller in size. The Wolf Dog is a dog with a difficult temperament. It gets along badly with other animals, which is why you shouldn't get another pet. The Wolf Dog has an excellent hunting instinct. It needs space and it simply can't live in an ordinary apartment. Because of the lack of suitable conditions, this breed becomes inadequate and can become quite aggressive towards others. German Shepherd This breed is very intelligent and not aggressive at all. These dogs are very loyal to their owner. They will obey any of his commands. Therefore, a shepherd trained to attack can become a dangerous weapon. 
However, with a competent upbringing, a German Shepherd will become the favorite of the entire family and a loyal friend for many years. Bull Mastiff The Bull Mastiff was bred in the early 19th century by crossbreeding a Mastiff and a Bulldog. This breed was originally intended to help rangers guard the woods. The Bull Mastiff is considered one of the best watchdog breeds, but you shouldn't keep the Bull Mastiff on a chain. It loves freedom. This loyal animal is fearless and will protect its owner, even risking its life. Bull Mastiffs are cheerful and love children. However, you shouldn't leave your child alone with this animal because the dog, while playing, may accidentally knock your child down. Bull Mastiff has a serious garden instinct, so it can perceive very noisy and active games of children as a threat and rush to defense. This animal is very aggressive to other dogs and cats, especially to those who intrude on its territory. Presa Canario This breed was initially intended for the protection of cattle. The Presa Canario is distinguished by its impressive size, fearlessness and loyalty. This dog will always remain wary of strangers. Particular attention should be paid to the upbringing of the animal as early as when it's a puppy. The Presa Canario has great strength and power, which should always be controlled. You shouldn't stop training and drills, because the Presa Canario can get out of control. This giant can easily knock an adult down and cause serious harm, which is why small children shouldn't be left unsupervised around this dog. Even while playing, the Presa Canario can accidentally injure a child. American Bulldog The American Bulldog is a dog defender. It was bred to help farmers corral their cattle. For the family where the Bulldog grew up, it will be a sweet and kind friend, but will always be distrustful of strangers and just passers-by. Just like with other large dogs, you shouldn't leave the Bulldog with young children. The American Bulldog is characterized by increased aggression towards cats and other dogs. Therefore, you shouldn't go out for a walk with a Bulldog without a leash and a muzzle. Tosa Inu This fighting dog breed was bred in Japan in the 19th century. Tosa Inu was the result of crossbreeding Mastiff, Bulldog and Terrier. It's quite an aggressive dog characterized by determination and stubbornness. Fighting with the enemy, he will fight to the last. However, as in the case with other animals, with the right upbringing and training, you can get a loyal and sweet friend. Nevertheless, the animal has innate aggression and doesn't get along with others at all. You shouldn't have this breed for families with children. When you are walking this dog, don't forget the leash and muzzle. Cani Corso This breed is a guard dog. It is distinguished by its large size and the considerable weight of up to 60 kilograms. The Cani Corso is a member of the Mastiff group and is considered the most obedient and intelligent of its kind. This breed learns quickly and easily obeys commands. They are inquisitive and quite calm. Cani Corso can easily be taken hunting or used for police work. Representatives of this breed get along well with children, but increased activity of a child can be mistaken for aggression. If you are thinking about getting this breed, you should know that the Cani Corso absolutely don't get along with other animals. American Band Dog The American Band Dog has been bred from crossbreeding different types of Mastiffs. It's a reliable and loyal friend, guardian and protector. If you take care of its correct and competent upbringing, you will get a friendly and affectionate dog who gets along well even with children. If the American band dog grew up with another dog or a cat, then it will perceive these animals as family members, but it will be very aggressive and unfriendly to other animals and strangers. That's why it is necessary to take a muzzle and a leash for a walk with the American band dog. Dogo Argentino This breed was originally bred in Argentina to hunt pumas and other large animals. This is quite a hard breed that likes to dominate. Therefore, this animal will obey only a strong and intelligent owner whom it will respect. Dogo Argentino quickly becomes attached to all family members and becomes a loyal friend. Dogo Argentino is wary and even aggressive towards strangers and thanks to its hunting instinct will chase all escaping animals. Borbul The Borbul belongs to the service breeds. It was bred in South Africa, but in some countries it is banned breed that can't be bred. 
Only a competent handler should be the owner of the borbal, as these animals can be kept without proper training and constant control. This breed can get along with cats and is great with children with whom it grew up. However, it is aggressive toward other dogs and can even kill an animal. It is a quite large dog, which can weigh up to 90 kilograms. Bully Kuta This breed was bred in Pakistan and is secondarily called the Pakistani Mastiff. Bully Kuta is a little amenable to training and has quite a hard character. Only an experienced, strong-willed owner should breed such an animal, then the dog will be a loyal friend and protector. These animals do not get along with other animals and can even kill a rival. This breed is not suitable as a pet in a family with children. Goldong This breed is very popular in Pakistan and India. The dog is of medium size and has a strong-built body. These animals are distinguished by loyalty, intelligence, and very attached to their family and will protect the owner at all costs. Despite its positive qualities, the gold dong is very aggressive to others and likes to dominate. It is not worth having this dog in a family with children, but it is an excellent choice for guarding its owner and territory. Caucasian Shepherd Dog The Caucasian Shepherd is considered one of the largest breeds of dog. This dog needs constant control and training from early on as a puppy. This is a very good-natured and calm dog, but at the slightest threat, it rushes to defend its owner and territory. The Caucasian Shepherd dog will be a devoted friend and the best protector of all family members. It will be an affectionate and kind dog, but only with the right training. English Mastiff Originally, this aggressive dog was used to protect property and guard it. Today, representatives of this breed are kind and affectionate dogs who love children. They don't pose any serious danger to people. However, you shouldn't leave small children alone to play with the animal to avoid unwanted injuries. Rhodesian Ridgeback This is a hunting breed that originated in Zimbabwe. They are intelligent, active animals that quickly become attached to the entire family and children. They are very agile and energetic. When going out for a walk, don't leave the animal without attention, because with a strong hunter instinct, this animal can pose a threat to others. Moscow Watchdog This breed was bred by crossing the Caucasian Shepherd, St. Bernard, and Russian Hound. The Moscow Watchdog has a hard character and is difficult to obey. Nevertheless, with a strong owner, the dog will gladly obey commands. This breed is quite friendly and gets along well with all family members and children. Bull Terrier If you want to get a dog, you shouldn't start with a Bull Terrier. This animal has a hard character and it's not an easy dog to train at all. The Bull Terrier was originally bred as a fighting breed. That's why it is quite an aggressive animal. Only with proper upbringing and the right approach, you can get a loyal and obedient pet. For a family with a child, you should still choose another breed, more affectionate, calm, and loving children. The dog has a strong pursuit instinct, so when walking, you should take care of the safety of others, put on a muzzle for a bull terrier. As you can see, any dog without proper upbringing and competent training is capable of becoming an uncontrollable danger. Any of even the most aggressive animals can be made a loyal friend and a family member, just as the most harmless animal can turn into an evil monster. Are you afraid of dogs? Insects. Many people get goosebumps all over their bodies just from this word alone. This is not surprising at all because there are so many dangerous insects around the world. In total, there are about 1 million species of insects on Earth. Do you suffer from arachnophobia? Believe me, 
Spiders are not the worst thing you might encounter in nature. We present you with a list of the most dangerous insects on the planet. The top of the rating of the most dangerous insects opens, of course, the mosquito. Every year, more than 2 million people die because of this creature. Most often, mosquitoes are carriers of malaria. It affects the brain, liver, lungs, and cardiovascular system. But they can also infect people with West Nile fever, encephalitis, dengue virus, yellow and tropical fevers. A mosquito becomes a carrier of malaria when it bites an infected person. Malaria spreads throughout the insect's body, and after four days, the mosquito is a carrier of this deadly disease and remains dangerous for another six weeks. Malaria is widespread in African countries, but they don't even try to fight it. Tsetse fly There are 23 species of flies by this name. They carry a terrible disease called African trypanosomiasis. Tsetse flies are the worst enemy of the inhabitants of tropical regions of Africa. Each year, up to 7,000 people die from sleeping sickness. During the disease, a person begins to have a fever, insomnia, headaches, and swelling of the lymph nodes, affecting the immune and nervous systems. If treatment is not started in time, it's almost always fatal. Tsetse flies, like mosquitoes, are also blood-sucking insects, but the bite mark is much more serious. The fly's tiny teeth bite into the skin and leave a noticeable mark. The insect reaches the length of 1.5 cm and is distinguished by its yellowish color. The tsetse fly lives mainly in Africa. According to statistics, about 200,000 people in Uganda have died from a tsetse fly bite. Bullet ant The largest ant, which reaches a length of 2.5 cm. You can meet this creature in the forests of Paraguay and Nicaragua at the base of large trees. The ant lives in large colonies in nests, and its bite is excruciating. The pain after the bite can last for 24 hours. Giant Peacock Caterpillar This caterpillar was nicknamed the Killer Caterpillar for a reason. After meeting it, several people die every year. It lives in South America. The caterpillar throws out the strongest poison located on the bristles, which leads to hemorrhage and causes gangrene. Fire Ant There are more than 280 species of this ant on Earth. These small insects are aggressive, especially during the defense of their anthills. Such ants attack in groups of up to hundreds of insects. They bite frequently, causing burning pain. That's why they got such a name. Fire ants are native to South America, but today this insect could be found all over the world. Centipede the centipede lives everywhere. Almost all people have the most pleasant feelings about its appearance. A centipede bite is quite painful, but a fatal case is possible only if you are allergic to its poison. This is perhaps the most harmless creature on our list. Kissing Bug Like most of the most dangerous insects, the kissing bug also feeds on blood. It got its name because it bites people during sleep on the lips and eyes. He is attracted by the carbon dioxide released by breathing. This unpleasant creature is very dangerous because it's a carrier of the parasitic trypanosome, which causes Chagas disease. Because of this disease, about 12,000 people die every year. Symptoms may not appear immediately. After a few weeks, a person starts feeling weakness, pain throughout the body, and the tonsils swell. The kissing bug lives mainly in the United States, but can be found in Africa, Australia, and Asia. It has black and red colors. It's dangerous not only for people, but also for animals. There is no vaccine for Chagas disease yet, and doctors use anti-parasitic drugs for treatment. Japanese Giant Hornet This hornet species is one of the largest. The largest individuals reach 4 to 5 centimeters in length. Each hornet can kill up to 40 bees in just one minute. Hornets live in large colonies, where their number can reach up to 700. They feed mainly on honeybee larvae and are very aggressive. The sting of the giant Japanese hornet can cause a severe allergic reaction. Up to 40 people die each year from its sting. Asian Giant Hornet 
This is the largest hornet that can be found in our planet. Its length reaches 5 centimeters and its wingspan is 7.5 centimeters. The hornet can sting many times with its 6 millimeter stinger. You can find the Asian giant hornet in Asia in the mountains of Japan. The pain of an Asian giant hornet is so intense that it's often compared to having a hot nail driven into your leg. But in addition to painful sensations during the hornet sting, it also emits a specific smell that attracts other hornets. About 70 people die from the bite of an Asian giant hornet every year. African Honey Bee This famous bee killer is one of the most aggressive insects on the planet. These bees hunt in a group, can sting several times and chase their prey for more than a kilometer. Its stings are especially dangerous on the eyes and face. Bees live in a huge colonies of up to 80,000 individuals. In the 1950s, an attempt to increase honey production resulted in thousands of hybrids. In 1956, Brazilian biologist Warwick Kerr decided to add some traits of African bees to European bees. In his opinion, this hybrid would live well in the hot tropics and give more honey. This is how the Africanized bee appeared, which was very aggressive. Under very mysterious circumstances, about 20 colonies were released. The biologist hoped that the bees would quickly die, but they began to interbreed with drones and produce offspring. A new species of bees settled in South America and then in North America. Already in the 1980s, the hybrid could be found in Mexico and the United States. Now, these bees can be found in Texas, California, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, and other southern states. Over the 60 years of their existence, these hybrids have resulted in the death of more than 400 people and hundreds of animals, domestic and wild. Their attack can be fatal because they all together rush to defend their hive and their number can exceed 10,000 individuals. Therefore, everyone who is within a radius of 5 meters from the hive will be chased by bees. Oriental Rat Flea These fleas live where rats are. They live with them in the neighborhood and periodically switch to a rodent to refresh themselves. Females absorb more blood than males. The danger of these fleas is that they are active carriers of red typhus and plague. The flea doesn't leave its prey and is on the rodent or in the neighborhood. Each species poses a serious danger to humans and animals. They can also infect their prey with helmets. Their saliva contains allergens that can cause reactions in both humans and animals. Typically, their bites are harmless and painless, but can cause itching and inflammation. Often, by scratching the wound, animals introduce themselves to a second infection. Widespread infection after multiple bites can cause fatal anemia, especially in small animals. The Black Plague epidemic, carried by rats, claimed millions of lives in Europe in the 14th century. Today, the disease is very rare in Europe, but it has progressed in poorer countries. Dorylus or Siafu These are nomadic blind ants that live in African countries. Today, there are more than 20 million of them. Although these ants are blind, thanks to pheromones, they know exactly where to go. They bite everyone they meet with their powerful hook-like jaws. Bites from these insects kill over 50 people every year. Bites can lead to serious complications and without medical attention, a person can die. A huge variety of different creatures live in our planet. Many of them are harmless, but some are quite dangerous. The danger of insects lies in their very tiny size, so people often don't even notice them. But when you're in the forest or in nature, you should always take care of your safety. Choose things that cover as much as possible all parts of your body and use special repellents that will protect you from insect bites. Well, which insect causes fear in you? Parasites. During life, a person encounters them at least once. These can be commonplace fleas and pets or more unpleasant guests from the owner themselves. But God forbids anyone to meet with one of the representatives on our list today. These terrible and malicious creatures are capable of undermining health and even ruining the life of anyone who, through carelessness or due to a fatal set of circumstances, meets them on their way. Loa Loa or African Eye Worm 
The African eyeworm is the causative agent of the dreaded disease Loa Loa filariasis. Skin rashes, itching, and fever are only the first symptoms of this progressive disease. This is caused by worms that travel under the skin of the eyelid and into the patient's blood. However, the course of the disease can remain asymptomatic for a while. It's until the helminth begins to cross the bridge of the nose or penetrate under the conjunctiva, thereby causing terrible pain. From the larvae that have entered the bite side by a special kind of carrier fly, adult worms 2 to 7 cm long slowly develop. Dense, painful swelling of various parts of the body, and if the eyes are injured, swelling of the eyelids can occur. The formation of abscesses around the dead adult helminths is also clearly pronounced. All this is fraught with the fact that when the parasites move, nerve endings are irritated and the metabolic products of the parasite poison the human body and cause allergies. There can be only one prevention of infection, is to protect against the bites of horseflies, which are carriers of the disease. Guinea worm or Dracunculus medinensis Guinea worm is a parasitic roundworm that causes the disease of the same name in humans, guinea worm disease, or in other words, dracunculiasis. Dracunculiasis is a crippling parasitic disease that is on the verge of elimination. People become infected by drinking water containing contaminated microcrustaceans. The larvae emerge from them, penetrate the human intestinal wall, and develop in the abdominal cavity, turning into adult worms in about one year. About a year after infection, an excruciatingly painful blister forms, and in 90% of cases, it is localized on the shin. Then, one or more worms are released outward, causing a burning sensation. To relieve the burning pain, patients often immerse the parasite-affected body part in water. At the same time, the worm releases thousands of larvae into the water. Prevention is nevertheless possible, and it's thanks to it that the disease is on the verge of elimination. Filarial worms Lymphatic filariasis is caused by infection with parasites belonging to the roundworm family Filariodia. It leads to abnormalities in the lymphatic system. Moreover, it can cause abnormal hypertrophy of certain body parts, causing pain and leading to severe disability and social stigmatization. Adult worms live in the lymphatic vessels and disrupt the normal functioning of the lymphatic system. Their lifespan is about 6 to 8 years, and during this time they produce millions of microfilarii that circulate in the blood. Infection occurs as a result of the transmission of the parasites to humans through a mosquito bite. Lymphatic filariasis can be eliminated by stopping the spread of infection with annual courses of preventive chemotherapy. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis fungus However, humans are not the only ones who suffer from parasites on our planet. Many parasites skillfully manipulate host behavior to increase their chances of survival and reproduction. For example, some species of Cordyceps fungi cause infected ants to leave the colony, climb up a plant, and hang onto it, holding on with their jaws. After the insect dies, the fruiting body of the fungus sprouts from it. Essentially, Cordyceps turns the host into a vehicle to travel to a place that is perfect in terms of maturing and spreading spores. Scientists have demonstrated that the fungus attacks several important functions of the host's nervous system at once. For example, it knocks down the ant's daily routine by disrupting genes associated with circadian rhythms. Even more destructive, the parasite affects the victim's sense of smell, the main channel of its communication with congeners. As a result, the infected individual loses contact with the colony, moves far away from it, and does not return in time. An addition effect is the interference of cordyceps in the transmission of the neurotransmitters. As a result, the poor ant dies and the fungus continues its lineage. Moose tick The winter or moose tick is a tick that mainly attacks moose. It differs from other ticks in its impressive size, up to 15 mm, which reaches its peak at the end of winter. In years when the infestation is significant, thousands of ticks can attack a single moose, causing problems for severely affected animals. The animal begins to overgroom itself to try to stop the severe itching. Some stop being afraid of people and may seem lost or confused. 
They may also stop eating and start going outside of their natural habitat. Weight loss and poor physical condition, fur loss and wounds and blood loss combined with harsh weather conditions can affect moose health. It makes them more vulnerable to predators, poaching and road accidents. In some cases, severely affected animals can die. Young moose are especially vulnerable. The winter tick can attack other species of ungulates, but it's the moose that suffers the most. It's not dangerous to humans. The highest number of winter ticks ever found on moose was about 100,000. However, this moose cub was already dead, most likely a victim of anemia, which develops when so many ticks deplete moose blood. Here is Leucochloridium paradoxum, another representative of flatworms. The final hosts of this parasite are birds. Eggs with bird droppings reach the external environment, where they are eaten by a snail. In its digestive tract, the parasite develops to the stage of sporocyst, which is an oblong sac filled with cercaria. Such sporocysts migrate to the snail's tentacles, turning them into caterpillar-like shapes to attract birds by their bright coloration and pulsation. The leucochloridium causes the snail to move to more lit areas and become more visible. Eventually, the bird eats the snail and the parasite enters the final host. After a bird feasts on a part of the snail, the parasite is home again in the body of its main host. Then, a snail's severed tentacles grow back. However, a holy place is never empty. After a while, new sporocysts penetrate there. This is how the poor snail will have to suffer for the rest of its life. Glyptopantalus parasitic wasps Some species of parasitic wasps of the species Glyptopantalus, also called ichneumon wasps, lay their eggs in the bodies of other insects, such as caterpillars. The parasitic wasp injects about 80 eggs into a host at a time, along with a poly-DNA virus and a small amount of venom that paralyzes the caterpillar until the wasp makes a clutch. The virus helps suppress its host's immune system so that the host fully adjusts to the larval rearing function and does not turn into a pupa. The hatching larvae grow and develop inside the unfortunate victim, feeding on its lymph without damaging its internal organs. After that, they leave the caterpillar's body, attach themselves nearby to a leaf and pupate. But two or three larvae remain inside to control the caterpillar. Under this control, instead of continuing its development, it stays in place and selflessly protects alien larvae from other insects. When the Yannick Newman wasps emerge, they die. Cymothua exigua, or the tongue-eating louse. Here's a unique parasite that not only eats the body parts of its host, but completely replaces what it has eaten. The tongue-eating louse penetrates through the gills and establishes itself in the body of a fish, the spotted rose snapper. It eats the tongue of its victim and then begins to feed on the mucus and, however, it works diligently instead of the tongue. Female specimens reach a length of up to 3 cm, males up to 1.5 cm. The lice multiply right in the mouth of the fish. Periodically, a sexually mature male swims into the fish's mouth through the gills and mates with the female living there. Another surprising thing is that while the town eating louse is growing, it is a male. Once it penetrates the snapper's oral cavity, it transforms into a female. Sometimes, the tongue-eating louse can settle in the mouth of large fish in pairs. The victim uses them as its tongue, unaware of the replacement. Kandaroo or a vampire fish Both parents and officials always remind us that pissing in rivers or lakes or pools is not allowed. Now, for sure, no one will do that after reading about the kandaroo. It's a very little fish that lives in the Amazon and penetrates the bladder during urination. It feeds on blood and flesh in the body, causing severe pain. Indians consider this fish more dangerous than the piranha. When swimming in rivers, the fish can easily penetrate a person's genital urinary organs, resulting in terrible pain and ultimately death. The vampire fish is the only vertebrate that lives a parasitic life on humans. The gadfly is capable of laying eggs in the human body. 
If the gadfly has chosen someone as a victim, then the victim will nurture thousands of larvae, which will hatch from the eggs. For the larva to grow, it will eat everything it finds around it, which is flesh. As a result, a hole will form on the body and the person will feel the larva moving under the skin. Removing the parasite or eggs will require the help of a surgeon. Parasitizing in the body of cattle, the gadfly causes the development of a very dangerous disease hypodermatitis. The larvae of the subcutaneous gadfly have enough time to severely traumatize the organs and tissues, as well as the skin of the animal. During the period of tubercle formation, the productivity of animals is noticeably reduced, weight gain of young animals and meat quality are reduced. The gadfly larvae secrete a special toxic substance, hypodermatoxin. Together with the meat and milk of an infected animal, it can enter the human body, harming health. Conclusion: Humans and parasites have likely coexisted together since the beginning of life on Earth. Each of us fights for our own survival in our own way. Parasites have chosen the path of symbiosis and exist solely thanks to their host, be it human or animal, or even insect. Looking at the parasites mentioned today, we can only hope that in our lives we won't share our bodies with any of them. Our planet consists of 70% water. Today about 95% of the water expanses remain poorly explored or unexplored at all. The bulk of all creatures living in the seas and oceans live no more than 50 meters deep. The world's oceans are home to many amazing creatures that feel great at great depths. They are not bothered by high pressure or pitch darkness or lack of food or just a cold environment. The features of deep sea creatures are determined by their habitat conditions. The most basic difference is their simplified organization, flat body and long limbs. Here you can find echinoderms, mollusks, crustaceans, and planktonic organisms. Let's get acquainted with the most incredible deep-sea inhabitants. The deepest sea fish was discovered in 2014 at the bottom of the Mariana Trench and is called Pseudoliparis swiri or Mariana snailfish. This deep-sea creature is a predator and has been recorded at a depth of 8,200 meters. Its length is about 10 centimeters. Blobfish this deep-sea dweller is very different from ordinary fish and looks like an alien or a monster from sci-fi movies. The size of the blobfish is no more than 30 centimeters. It lives at the bottom of the ocean near Tasmania and Australia. This fish has a spur on the front that closely resembles a human nose with eyes on each side. This fish has practically no muscles and resembles a slug. Its lifestyle is very similar to that of the sloth. The blobfish swims slowly hoping that small prey will fall into its open mouth by themselves. Meanwhile, this creature doesn't have to worry about its safety. The blobfish is completely inedible. Nevertheless, it remains on the verge of extinction. The Shark from the Anime In 2018, American scientists discovered a new species of deep-sea shark named Squalus clarke. This fish has vast and amazing eyes that resemble an alien or cartoon character. The shark is named after Eugenie Clark, a marine biologist who was the first woman to study sharks. This shark lives in the western Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Its length is about 70 centimeters. All 20 species of squalus sharks need to be protected and studied. Japanese Spider Crab These creatures live off the coast of Japan. They can be found at depths of 50 to 300 meters. The Japanese spider crab can weigh up to 40 kilograms. The crabs look very fantastic and frightening because the span of their legs is about 3 meters and can reach up to 3.7 meters. Another impressive thing is that according to scientists, these amazing creatures can live up to 100 years. Pinnate Batfish This deep-sea dweller is very far from ordinary fish in its appearance. It doesn't look like them at all and can't even swim. Nevertheless, the pinnate batfish is a fish that moves on the bottom thanks to its fins, very similar to legs. This fish lives in the warm waters of the world's oceans at great depths. The largest specimens can reach up to half a meter in length. The pinnate batfish is a predator that lures small fish because of the bulb in its head, which has a special smell. Fish, crustaceans, and worms swim to this smell, and the pinnate batfish sits in ambush. 
When the prey is close, the batfish grabs it. Thrilled, relict shark. This shark lives at a depth of 1,500 meters and therefore is practically never encountered by people. Only in 2007, such a shark was found in shallow water and died after a couple of hours of transportation. The length of such an individual was 160 centimeters. Scientists have revealed similarities with extinct ancestors of the time of the dinosaurs. Wolfish This fantastic fish belongs to the family Anarchishatidae. The wolfish lives a depth of up to 500 meters in rocky terrain. A special feature of this creature is that it can stretch up to one and a half meters in length. These predators have strong teeth that help them crush clams, sea urchins and crabs. The wolffish has many names such as devilfish, sea wolf, wolf eel, ocean catfish and sea cat. Giant Isopod This crustacean creature can be found at the bottom of the Indian, Pacific and Atlantic Oceans at depths from 170 to 2000 meters. This giant isopod feeds on carrion such as dead fish, whales and squid. Roundworms, sea cucumbers and sponges can be food for isopods, but they can also attack predators larger than themselves. Giant isopods are the largest crustaceans. Their size is explained by low temperatures when the body cells increase in size and their lifespan increases. These creatures grow their entire lives, reaching a length of up to 36 centimeters. The largest isopod that was caught weighed 1.7 kilograms and reached 76 centimeters in length. Micropena microstoma It is a deep-sea fish with a unique anatomical and rather fragile structure. The fish has a soft transparent head and a barrel-shaped eyes and sensory organs that can extend and rotate. Pacific Hagfish This creature lives in the Pacific Ocean at depths of up to 1 km. In case of danger, the hagfish is capable of secreting huge amounts of mucus. The hagfish are scavengers. They can often be seen on the body of a dead creature. It is thanks to them the sea bottom has not turned into a garbage dump. These sanitarians clean the bottom from the corpses of dead animals. Ocean Sunfish This fish is the heaviest and is listed in the Guinness Book of Records with a weight of 2,235 kg, length of 3.1 meters and height of 4.26 meters. This fish lives at depths of up to 850 meters and is not dangerous to humans, despite its huge size. Bathysaurus ferox This creature lives at depths of 600 to 3,500 meters and is classified as a deep-sea lizard fish. It is one of the most dangerous deep-sea predators that devours everything in its path. The Bathysaurus ferox reaches 50 to 65 centimeters in length. Even the tongue of this creature has sharp fangs. The King of Herrings or the Giant Oarfish This fish can be found in the Pacific, Indian and Atlantic Oceans. The largest individual was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. Its length was 11 meters and its weight was 272 kilograms. It is an almost inedible fish. Even animals often refuse to eat its meat. The Viperfish It's one of the most fearsome and ruthless deep-sea predators. It lives at a depth of 2,800 meters. Its teeth resemble fangs that don't even fit in its mouth. This predator swims up to its prey at a great speed and stabs at it. The Viperfish can swallow fish larger than themselves thanks to its expanding stomach. It has a luminous bait on the end of its spine, which makes it easy to catch its prey. The Giant Siphonophore This creature consists of a large colony of organisms called zooids. If you lift the siphonophore to the surface, its body will disintegrate because its skeleton is only held together by enormous pressure. That's why it is impossible to identify this creature because the caught siphonophore looks like drops of gelatin. They reach up to half a meter in length. Uripharynx pelasinoids this fish lives a depth of up to 3,000 meters and is also called the pelican eel. Its main feature is its huge mouth, which exceeds the body size of the fish. 
This helps the pelican eel swallow prey larger than itself. It reaches a length of about 70 centimeters. Goblin Shark This shark can be seen at depths of up to 200 meters. Because of its specific appearance, this shark is called a goblin shark. The largest individual weighed over 200 kilograms and its body length was 3.8 meters. This shark is practically unstudied by scientists as only 40 of its individuals are known to science so far. Deep Sea Anglerfish This creature looks just like a monster from a sci-fi movie. Science knows over 200 species of sea devils that live at the bottom of the Antarctic and Atlantic Oceans. The deep sea anglerfish lures its prey with its glowing backbone. Thanks to its large mouth, it can swallow prey twice its size. The females of the deep sea anglerfish are larger, while the males lose their ability to digest food as they grow. Therefore, it gnaws into the female's body and becomes a sperm's preying parasite attached to the female. Banded Piglet Squid This creature lives at a depth of 100 meters and looks quite cute. They have an almost transparent body and luminous organs called photophores, which are located under their eyes. Melanocetus johnsoni This creature lives at a depth of up to 4,500 meters in all oceans. The female of this fish is much larger than the male and grows up to 18 centimeters while the male is only 3 cm. The Melanocetus has a luminous lure that resembles a fishing rod and helps it to hunt. The Tongue-Eating Louse A very frightening and unusual creature is a parasitic isopod. The isopod clings to the tongue of its victim, the Lochanus johnny, and sucks all the blood from its tongue. When the tongue atrophies, the isopod becomes a new tongue and feeds on the food remains of the Lucanus johnny. This process practically doesn't cause any discomfort to the Lucanus johnny and it continues to exist normally. Lionfish It was first spotted on the shores of Florida in the 1990s of the 20th century. These fish are a danger to other species because they eat everything around them. Lionfish have long spines that protect them from predators, although predators for them are the same lionfish which are considered cannibals. They pose a serious danger to humans because their venom can be fatal for people with heart disease or with allergic reactions. Enoplogaster cornuta This monster lives at a depth of up to 5 kilometers and the fry swim close to the surface of the water. The adults are so different from the fry that scientists used to even consider them different species. The predatory Anoplogaster cornuta grows up to 18 centimeters in length. Giant Squid These creatures live at a depth of more than 2,000 meters and reach a length of up to 10 meters. The maximum weight known to science was 495 kilograms. The average size of such squid is 8 meters. They use their long tentacles to catch their prey. Kiwa hirsuta This crustacean creature lives at a depth of over 2 kilometers. It can be found in the Pacific Ocean. It seems that the crustacean is covered with fur because all the limbs and chests of this creature are covered with bristles. Only one specimen has been caught at a depth of 2,200 meters. Idiacanthus these fish live at a depth of up to 4 kilometers. The length of females is many times greater, reaching up to 40 centimeters, while the males reach a length of up to 7 centimeters. The female Idiacanthus are predators. They can easily cope with larger prey because their mouth and stomach can stretch. The lower jaw can extend forward and drop downward. Males of this species don't eat at all. They exist only for reproduction. Chaliotis. These creatures live at depths of up to 4,000 meters. They have an outgrowth with a photophore to lure their prey. They are quite similar to Idiacanthus. Their mouth and stomach can stretch, allowing them to not eat every day. Black Swallower. It inhabits subtropical and tropical waters of the oceans, 
This creature is capable of swallowing its prey whole and much larger than itself thanks to its stretching stomach. It reaches a length of about 15 centimeters. The Giant Amoeba It is a single-celled organism and lives at a depth of over 10 kilometers. This creature reaches up to 10 centimeters in length and contains poisonous substances such as uranium, mercury, and lead. Giant amoebas filter and recycle sludge so that other organisms can exist at the bottom. Blunt-nosed six-gill shark This fish is often called the cow shark because of its large build. It reaches up to 5 meters in length. It descends to depths of up to 2,500 meters and rises to the surface at night in search of prey. It can feed on crabs, rays, seals, and other sharks. Tardigrades These invertebrate creatures are very hardy. They easily adapt to any conditions such as the bottom of the ocean, ice, or hot springs. Tardigrades survive even after exposure to radiation, ultraviolet light, and even in outer space. All of this is possible because tardigrades can go into anabiosis and remove water from their bodies. Their size decreases and their body covers itself with a waxy coating. Vampire Squid This deep-sea dweller feels quite comfortable at a depth of over 3 kilometers. This squid has retained a resemblance to its ancestors, who lived over 300 million years ago. Giant Tube Worms these invertebrate creatures live at the bottom of the ocean with high hydrogen sulfide levels. They like low temperatures and complete darkness. Tiburonia granrojo This creature belongs to the family Olmeridae. These creatures are characterized by their large size, as large as 1 meter in length. The jellyfish use its pale red tentacles to catch prey. Stargazer these terrifying-looking creatures are also very dangerous. They have two poisonous spines with which they strike their prey suddenly emerging from the sand. These fish are electric, so an encounter with them can end very badly. Pelican eel or gulper eel This deep-sea creature is rarely seen by humans. The pelican eel looks quite strange and is capable of swallowing prey much larger than itself. The giant shark, or Megamata shark. It is extremely rare to see this shark. It was discovered in 1976. The main feature of this fish is a huge mouth, allowing it to easily swallow small fish and plankton. Chimera. These fish are also called ghost sharks. They can be found at a depth of 2,500 meters. Now science knows 50 species of chimeras. They have poisonous spines for protection. Chimeras eat mostly echinoderms and clams, other fish, or even their own relatives. As you can see, the deep sea world is very diverse, sometimes even frightening and fantastic. A huge number of creatures, from harmless to the most dangerous, that live at great depths. This outer water world remains poorly explored due to the impossibility of man to go so easily to the great depths. Let's hope that modern technology and the latest developments of scientists will soon make it possible to better explore this amazing deep-sea world.